Grab some safety glasses. We're gonna go build stuff. So this is where the magic's gonna happen. I've built a circle of garden stones around this big charcoal grill, and we're gonna build up a wooden structure around it to fit this oversized grate. Now I do have big plans for this project, so we're gonna make it about two feet tall, and then we're gonna build a slanted roof. Let's see how it turns out. So we're gonna be using cedar, which is an untreated wood. If you use treated wood, the chemicals inside will burn off into your food, and that's not really good. So we're using one by sixes, which we got about five inches of. Shrinkflation is real. To clear the grate, we need at least 25 inches or so. Doing some basic math with a five inch piece of wood that gets us about 16 pieces around. Let's get started. So we're almost ready to go, but we have a problem because if you put these boards together end to end, they fit nicely together. When you start angling them, they poke out and they look kind of ugly. So we're gonna need to cut a bevel. Now, 360 divided by 16 pieces gives us an uneven 22 and a half degrees. Divided by the two pieces, that's gonna give us 11 and a quarter degrees that we need to bevel off of these. It's a little difficult to do by eye. Let's see how we do. And now, not too bad for freehand but I still wouldn't hire me to build a fence. Last piece before we go on is to build the brackets that are gonna go in. Now it'll be a lot easier to use steel, but I'm trying to keep this as natural as possible. So I'm gonna build some brackets out of two by four. I can hide behind it now. All right, now we gotta figure out how to top the thing. And the longer this project goes on, the more I just wanna build a flat top, but that's not what we're here for. So I was thinking something along the lines of a peak. I have some ideas for that. Maybe about, maybe about that high up or so. Now the good news is there's a lot of math that we can do to figure this out, or we could just figure out how long we want these pieces. We simply draw, we simply draw a line from the center of the board to the corner and then it'll perfectly fit in the height that we want it to. Alright, time for a tour. 
So we have our food shelf here, which should be large enough to fit a turkey when the time comes down to it or anything else that we have in mind. On the top grate here, we can put our water or drip pan or anything else. If we're not using it, we can simply take it away. It sucks that this one doesn't have the flap to access the charcoal, but you do have room to take it out without much hassle. And then we have our charcoal down here and whatever smoking wood that we want to add. Now, I'm going to light this off camera because I've never actually used charcoal before and I don't want you guys to see me make a fool of myself. All right, so with only five lumps of coal, we're already at 60 degrees Celsius, which is plenty enough heat to cold smoke. I soaked some off-cut cedar wood chips in some water for a little while. Let's see what kind of smoke profile we get. It's a little disconcerting that it smells like the wood that we built it out of. So we have a decent amount of smoke and the good news is it mostly seems to be coming out of the top. Uh, it's coming a lot out of the top, but it's not seeping out of the sides like I was worried about. How much smoke flavor that actually puts into something, we'll have to find out later. So now that we know that it smokes, we need to smoke something. So oak, it windy. So to make our smoke packs, we have some chipped wood here. It is a mix of maple and bourbon barrels. So oak infused with bourbon flavor. I have some aluminum foil. I'm just gonna put a bunch down in the center here. Surface area is your friend. Give it a nice fold. And then with it wrapped up nice and tight, I'm just gonna poke some holes in it for it to breathe through. And then when this stops smoking, I'll have another one ready to go. Two hours later, this is what our garlic looks like. We have a little bit of gold on the bottom. If you press into the bulbs, they're softer inside. I mean, they did dehydrate. We kept this at about 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 75-ish Celsius, plus minus. Now, lessons learned. Lump coal for cold smoking was a little bit difficult. I gotta work on my technique for that. I did have to open the aluminum on the wood chips. So soaking wood chips for cold smoking didn't work for me. It took too long to heat the chips up. I'd probably go dry and maybe with more charcoal, just scatter them over the coals themselves. So here's our garlic. I mean, it smells like garlic. I would say there is still a bit of a smoke smell to it. It's not super strong, but you can tell that there's something else there. I'll work on my technique. Now I am gonna look into sealing the cracks. It did let a lot of smoke out in all sorts of places. I do want it to keep a little bit more in, but overall, I'm gonna call this build a success. If you wanna build your own, there's probably cheaper and easier ways to do it. Maybe you don't need to make it a circle. Maybe you could start with a square, but the reasons behind this are, I wanted it to be built out of as many natural materials as possible so that when I'm done using it, it can either be composted, recycled, or burned. The barbecue itself can be either sold or reused as a standalone unit, and the garden rocks can be disassembled and scattered wear out. So we're not using any permanent concrete, masonry, things like that. And the best part is, it's gonna be a really good talking point when we have company over. So I'm gonna practice a little bit more, and then I'm gonna come up with a whole bunch of new content for you guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.